cult members and welcome to the Pop Culture Cult. I'm Sean. And I'm Janice. And this is going to be our full spoiler review of episode six of Ahsoka. It's called Far, Far Away. Far Away. I was going to do the same joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, AMTP, whatever producers guild need to get their shit together uh because i want everybody else to be able to talk about this show um so pay your writers and actors that, that's yep we've been certain every every episode with that so uh okay after last week and the emotions that we all went through and how good that episode was a lot of people i think are going to have a moment of struggle with this episode because definitely a a Pull back. We need to set up the last three episodes. Kind of, kind of thing. It's it's very much a different episode than what we got last week. It does move the plot forward. It's not a filler episode. It definitely does move the plot forward, but it didn't have the big emotional stakes, the big fight battles, and all that kind of stuff like we had last week. Well, yeah, but you get Ron, which yeah, you know, if Ron's you, entrance is amazing. <laughs> it is, and you know, if you watched, um, Celebration. You know, any of the stuff from Celebration or whatever that kind of got spoiled. I mean, you know, yeah, he was at the trial. You yeah. know, you know what he looks like and everything. But and then you get Ezra, yeah, and and I think those are two really big kind of emotional things that yeah, don't. I agree. I mean, they're yeah, like you said, there's not a bunch of fighting scenes, although um, you know there is one good one with with sand people from another planet uh, yeah 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 it's it, they're essentially tuscan raiders yeah uh, uh, essentially uh panera that's not what they called it nasus can't remember what they called the name of the planet uh, them getting there has been the whole quest up until this point and yeah. now that they're there it is the desolate planet that we all thought it might be. Yeah. And there are some native people, including Night Sisters. Um, it was the Dothmerian home planet, I think is what they said on the way in. Um but having having this big intro to Thrawn and him walking like the Kamak Chimera showing up and and being there and Several hundred stormtroopers yeah. and the uh, kit kit kits. I I forgot how to say it already. <laughs> Kitsu Kitsuki style, where they use the gold to fix all the plates yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um. Uh. And they definitely are. The the stormtrooper armor is very worn. Whatever. Yeah. That intro is amazing. So when I do Ezra's and intro with the shell people um it's very very it's very it's very ezra like hey how's it going like yeah it's about time you got here kind yeah of thing yeah like which i could, thought was a nice diversion there wasn't like this big you know seeing each other from across the field and running you know or whatever it was just like hey i i took you long enough when they got to the village i really thought like he was down by the water fishing yeah, and she saw him from a distance. Yeah, that's yeah, and and I and and that would have been cool to 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 see it from her perspective, but her perspective from Sabine's perspective was seeing this village and seeing how these creatures have a society and have their there's the old ones and there's the baby and there's mom telling the baby not to wave at the stranger and like all, like that they had a little market going and and so. Like, they had antennas on their little pods. I want to know if they're getting cable. Can they get what, the Pac-12 network? What, <laughs> what's going on with that? Can we get Valley Sports so we can watch the Diamondbacks in the playoffs? <laughs> um, but, it, it, but it was her, like all the struggle that she had gone through to get there. And essentially sacrificing her own galaxy for her. I won't say love yet, but her definitely caring for Ezra. And her seeing that there's 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 beings out there that are happy with their lives and, and, and coming together as a community, like her and the 
the ghost crew with Ezra all kind of did. And then him just kind of stand leaning against this little hut going, hey, what, it's about time you got here. <laughs> hey, what's up? I knew you'd figure it out. And I love her reply. Instead of like going and running to, into his arms, her like, well, you didn't tell us where you were going. Yeah. <laughs> Which is so on point. Like, yeah, this is so on point. Yeah. But I, 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 I'm really interested in what the, the, the discord is going to be. I think some people are going to be disappointed because they're on such a high from last week, which I totally get. Like that week, that last week's episode is top tier, one or two episodes of all of Star Wars, um, including the movies. Um, now it's it is for a lot of people like me who are emotionally invested in the Clone Wars and Rebels right. and all the other stuff right. that's going on in the storytelling. Maybe not necessarily for you who. Yeah, it was a good episode, but it wasn't as emotional stakes, like yeah, whatever. Yeah. But this episode was definitely a, a a taking of a deep breath after that. Sure. Yeah. And I think I, I I'm really interested in how people are going to take that. Because there it there was an expectation of, well, that's a banger. What's the rest of the series gonna be like? And it's like, no, no, no. This series is to set up something else. Yeah. Yeah. And and a lot of people don't like that storytelling. Now there will be a complete story here, and that complete story is Thrawn's return. Right. But then you don't bring him back, you don't go to all this effort to not advance this story somehow. Yeah. So so, you know, whether that's I mean, there'll probably be some stuff for the next season of The Mandalorian, um, whether it's peripheral or, you know, or more Mandalorian and Thrawn are, you know, like yeah. face to face. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, they're not, you know, they they don't even know if they're going to do another season of Ahsoka. So uh, they have not officially said it, right? But everybody on the planet has made some inference that there's a second season. Written. Yeah, I mean that's typical Disney with a with a new IP. Mm-hmm. They're gonna wait and see. Potentially, maybe they're filming already. Who knows? But um, maybe not right now. Well, not right now. Yeah, I guess not. But um, you know, to to not announce it and see how it goes. Right. Right. So, right. like the the Obi Wan series kind of had more mixed reviews. I think. Yeah. So you know they can they can pause on that and maybe come back to it later or or not because it is a complete. You know, it's a little capsule, so they don't have to. They didn't leave it on a cliffhanger. They, it is they, a self-contained story. Yeah, I, 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 the, the, the Kenobi series is a really good, good kind of bench point because that was always supposed to be a movie. There was always supposed yeah. to be this movie, and they changed it several times. And then Disney Plus came along, and they, they changed it to a movie on Disney Plus, and they changed it to a series, and then they, the showrunner changed. And so it was always a self-contained story. It was one self-contained yeah. story. So having that sequel season doesn't had was never really a thing. Like it was always supposed to be a one-off kind of right, thing. Right. And this has always been talked about as a one-off. But uh, the the discussion of if you're going to bring somebody as important as Thrawn into the conversation, yeah, you don't waste them in what is essentially three episodes, right? Right, and he hasn't really even done anything. He showed a glimpse of it in this episode, and you're not even going to get the crew of the ghost back together until probably the very last episode, right? Yeah. Because even though Ahsoka is on her way, then they've got to go back, and yep. then you get Hera, and and, you got, and, and where's Zeb, and where's Callus, <laughs> and and it, like yeah, and yeah. Jason could take on his his dad's role. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> totally, totally. Um, let's talk about the Thrawn of it all. Um. Thrawn's entrance is the, the dichotomy of the Thrawn entrance compared to the Ezra entrance is, is that's a we're, we're talking it's a perfect example of those two characters. Thrawn is very proper and precise and in, and in, in calculating. He is Sherlock Holmes of the Star Wars universe, and so that or more Moriarty of the, Sher- <laughs> of the, of the Star Wars universe. Um, but his. He's very priced, precise. Like all of the stormtroopers were evenly spaced out, even if their armor didn't necessarily match. They were. They were Ron can adjust his expectations 
to new information. So when he gets there, um, with the with the remnants of the Chimera, uh, which is which was cool to see. Yeah, it was all pieced together. Uh, all pieced <laughs> together, missing two of the light uh, light engine motors, uh, light speed motors, light motors of speed fast go <laughs> streaky line thing. Um, but his discussion with Morgan Elsbeth. And the Night Sisters, get in the Night Sisters in a minute, um, was he expected her to be there. And he got introduced to Balin and Shin, and he called Balin, General Balin. Yeah, so he, from, he remembers from, So he remembers them. Yeah. Because he remembers all that kind of stuff. But he also didn't know about Sabine. Right. And the Night Sisters... Uh, the, the mothers, the, the the what did he call them? Dark, dark mothers, dark mothers, black mothers. Um, like didn't that. know that she, she was there because Balin kind of brought her in last minute. Yeah, and they have a little bit of force, you know, a fourth for for viewing foresight. Yeah, force yeah. foresight. Moving. Um, uh, and so Thrawn was able to adjust his plans. He's been working on all these plans to get the Night Sisters to bring Morgan Elswith there. He's done all this stuff, and now there's this new piece there. This new piece is Sabine. Oh, I can adjust what I'm doing in my game. And my game is, I need to eliminate all the different things that I cannot control. And that includes force wielders. And so he tells Sabine, here's the last information that we had. Here's a ride. Go have fun. Bye. Yeah. We're leaving in three days. Right. And then she leaves, and Balin and Shand are standing there. And Thrawn's like, yeah, go after her. Yeah. And and they're and and they're like okay cool and, and you kill them kill them kill them both when they get, when right. she finds them right and then when they leave, um, Thrawn's um uh stormtrooper in charge I can't remember what they called him first first then with the awesome gold face the awesome mask. gold mask I think that's voiced by uh, Sam Whitworth I think that's his voice I, basically I, everybody in a mask is voiced by Sam it, that's what we're going with right now um but then. He sends two units after all of them. Yeah. And it just feels like uh, Thrawn has, I'm, I'm tired of losing to these force users and having their, having, he even freaks out, doesn't freak out, not the right word. He has um, a moment when the, when the Dark Mothers tell him that there's another Jedi coming. Yeah. And, and he f- gets upset with Morgan and Elizabeth. Morgan because- Elizabeth, beca- uh, because. Or Elsbeth. El- Elsbeth. Morgan Elsbeth. Um, because she was told that she was, de- that Ahsoka was dead. Right. And she even throws, like, Night Sisters and Jedi use the trick of death all the time. Like, like it was a thing. But he was like, here's another piece on the fr- about to be on the board yeah. <laughs> that I know I can't control. And I can't control their actions. Yeah. And so he's like, I want to know her home planet, um, her culture, her upbringing, who her master was. So that's where I was trying to get to. Yeah. The uh the second book in the Thrawn series, the modern Thrawn series, um, is called Alliances. And it is a uh it is a two part story of Thrawn the uh Mithronreal, not Thrawn, not Grand Animal Thrawn, whatever, Mithronreal, the alien, doing a mission with Anakin Skywalker during the Clone War. Okay. At the same time, Grand Animal Thrawn, or no, it's Admiral Thrawn, I think at this point in time, is doing, uh, no, it's Grand Animal Thrawn, is doing a mission with Darth Vader. So there's two parallel stories going on at the same time from Thrawn's point of view, one with Anakin, one with Darth Vader. And they're both dealing with a lot of the same thing. Both stories are ta- dealing with a lot of the same places, a lot of the same people, a lot of the same things. And so in that conversation, Thrawn figures out that Darth Vader is Anakin. Okay. And so that's a lot of what that book is about, is Thrawn, about this game that they're playing through the entire thing about, is Thrawn smart enough to figure out who Darth Vader really is? And he, and he figures it out and he tells him, that he figures this out, but he doesn't come right out and say it. It's not like, oh, I remember when you were Anakin. He was like, I remember f- working with someone like you before that you may have heard of before. And so 
when he finds out that Ahsoka's master was Anakin, he's there's he's going there's going to be a thing. There's gonna <laughs> there's gonna be a conversation, and that conversation could be Thrawn on the top of the pillar with Ahsoka. I, I could see that conversation being had. Okay. When when the Chimera gets ready to leave and they, Thrawn will stay until and the uh, uh, Morgan Elizabeth um, shuttlecraft will be there and then Ahsoka shows up and and he will address her directly about Anakin because they don't have this big episode last week about Anakin. You don't have Balin talking about Anakin without having that conversation now that Thrawn know, is going to know who Ahsoka's master right was. right. Yeah, and so I, I find I'm really interested what that conversation is going to be like. That's going to be a fireside chat. I want to see the two of them battle of wits. Ahsoka's going to lose, but I, I, it's it's going to be awesome. So, um, with the reunion of Ezra and Sabine, uh, Ezra's like, "How did you get here?" And she's like, "Can I have five minutes to celebrate this?" <laughs> Because yeah. I've been through some poo. And you're not going to be happy. And you're not going to be happy about Because you went what... to all this work and you were stranded on this on this planet in another solar system or galaxy or whatever for however many years. And I just undid it all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and even at the start of the episode uh, was Ahsoka and Hu Yang talking about what that why she made that decision. Right. And I love that Hu Yang pointed out to Ahsoka, this was always her this was always her decision. Right. This was always the decision she was gonna make. Yeah, because like Ahsoka's uh, upset because we didn't have enough time. And it's like first of all, whose fault is that? Right. <laughs> you had all the time in the world. You had to go she had to go through her own poo. Right. But you know, th- it's it's like all of Everything starting up again is kind of what um, caused the two of you to come back together, mm-hmm. right? Um, Balin and what was her name? Shin. And Shin showing up where where Sabine was and Sabine having the fight with her and all that is what brought them back together right. and made them decide, oh, maybe we can give this another chance. If that hadn't happened or if, if, if all of this with going to get Thrawn had happened without that, they would have never known. Yeah. So it's your fault. Right. That you didn't give this enough time. Right. To, right. to prepare her to make the right decision. You just told her you, you, this is, you can't make this decision. And, 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 but, and she should have known e- either way. She should have known that was the decision she was going to make. Even though we have Ahsoka the white and she has gone through her, her Belrog test. She has gone, she has evolved her as a person with, her acceptance of the force there's still going to be parts of her that's holding on to the old feelings right that she has right and those old feelings are she from where i sit right now until i'm told differently she still feels the only decision to be made was to destroy the map right and not to care about, and she still not to the. I need to care about everybody, um, and not be um, uh, so crippled, s- crippled by the fear of what could happen. Right, and so singularly focused. Right there, yeah. There could have been a way that they could have gone, like like together, like Hu Yang said in the last episode. Yeah. Together, maybe they could have figured out how to go get Ezra without bringing. Ron back right you know and she was just like no 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 we can't go well maybe you you know defeat um morgan morgan elsbeth and take the ring yourself and go yeah and get ezra and go back and yeah leave the run. you know i mean they didn't they didn't workshop anything no no <laughs> so it, it was just like we're not it, we can't do you it can't do it but she's still i mean she she has from her being introduced in the Mandalorian, she has been on this on this thought process of the fear of what could possibly happen. Her attachment, she was a fear she was afraid of her attachment that she had, like her master had, and her master turned into Darth Vader. Right. Became this void face of evil. 
and and so she's she has been so afraid of what it means to have Thrawn come back that she's just because she went through all that she hasn't had a chance to kind of even go th- like even like piece through everything that right. happened through her right she she woke up after a rotation a day they did the the wiggy wiggy thing she forgot what's going on she gets the ride from the whale and they're off yeah. she still hasn't had yeah. time to decompress what actually just happened right yeah. and hu yang talking about um like the history and like like that, that having that conversation of, uh, like she's like i remember you telling these uh, giving those lessons and it was the, the history of the galaxy one two and three and, mm-hmm. and ahsoka kind of jokingly said well number one's the best you know which is Kind of maybe a hand at the new at the High Republic, but I, I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna that's a little bit of a stretch. But her saying no, I don't want to hear her story, and then her kind of him pointing out to her, this was always Sabine's choice. This was always what she needed to do. This is what she was always called to do. Was kind of an eye opener for her at that point too. So she was like, you know what? Yeah, I do want a story. Well, and Balin talks about how. It's it was all it's all doomed to repeat itself. Yeah. And and, you know, that's something we say today that history repeats itself. If you don't learn the lesson, then it's going to happen again. Yeah. yeah. And and so that could be. Somewhere that they go or um, with with the show in general or the story in general or just more compact in that Ahsoka could maybe who Yang tells her a story from those from that history and she figures out a a plan or you know how they did it then they could do it now so there was a couple of hints in there that maybe you know history is repeating itself and maybe they could learn something from yes yes um which is a lot of what this time period in star wars to start the storytelling is doing because they are keep they they are allowing the first order to be a more radicalized version yeah of what the empire was yeah and and so yeah there's there is this like perpetual cycle of building power corruption of power destruction of power destruction of people destruction of and and balin wants to break the wheel of what that is Mm -hmm. and so he talks about like the stories he heard when he was a, a youngling at the temple about what this place and what this place means. And he misses the idea of what the Jedi were supposed to be, not what they actually practically were during the civil war right? Uh, and the clone wars. And I, he, they haven't come out and said it, but it feels like he wants, if the story of this place is real, the other stories could be real, which right. means if he's heard the story of the world between worlds or the concept of the world between worlds, where he can go to someplace else in the timeline and do a, like, really honestly try to do a time travel thing where he fix where he tries to fix something. So this wheel is finally broken. Right. Of, of this. Except that's, that's, not how that, that's not how that works. Right. I was going to yeah. say that's not how that works, that's, but he might not know that. And he may not think of it that way. Yeah. I think he honestly believes it is a it is a opportunity for him to fix a wrong. Yeah, maybe much like if you've seen uh, Dial of Destiny and what Mads Mikkelsen's character is, right. he's trying to fix a wrong. I won't tell you what that wrong is, but if you haven't seen that movie, but he he wants to go back in time and fix a wrong. Right, and so so if. It, it it has that kind of mirror kind of conversation that they have again they haven't said it we're projecting completely projecting right. <laughs> but it, it wild speculation but he is mournful of the idea of what the jedi should have been yeah i mean he said that multiple times yeah and, and that was something that was handled in the new uh delilah delilah s dawson book uh inquisitor white rise of the red blade the main character in that book believes that the that the 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 idea of the jedi has been lost and so 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 her descent away from that is farther falling farther and farther to the dark side balin doesn't fall he's not a dark side 
person. He is yeah. not a Sith. He is not a dark yeah. side person. But he does use his abilities in a dark way. Yeah. And so I think there's a distinction in there that a lot of people are may may or may not be attuned to that kind of conversation because he has an orange blade and not a red blade. And 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 what his actions he rather not kill if he doesn't have to, but he will if he has to. Yeah. You know, that kind of yeah. conversation. Yeah. And so I think that that's a really, uh, I, I really have been intrigued about his story. Um, I'm wondering if that's his story is actually comes to an end at the end of the series. Yeah. I mean, of, I, I, I hope, hope so. Not. Well, I hope so because yeah. he, he passed away. So it's yeah. not like somebody on the, somebody pointed out, I think it was on TikTok or as a meme on Instagram, um, that, uh, Liv Schreiber mm-hmm. is 6'2". Ray Stevenson is 6'3". They have a similar body type. They showed a picture of, of Liv with a full beard. It was a dark beard because his hair is dark. Yeah. Uh, so he could possibly pay, play a version of him. I, again, I don't, I, don't, I'm, I don't feel like his character was a character that's supposed to continue on. Shin's character, I feel, is a character who's yeah. supposed to go on. Yeah. But Balin's character, I don't think, is a character. I think he, he's... I, He's going to get to a, I think he's going to get to his promised land and realize that it's not what he thought it was. Right, right, which is almost always what happens. Yeah. But I think Shin is going to be a, if she continues on, is going to be a, she's a Darth Vader esque personality. Yeah. She's definitely not. She's le- learning the wrong lessons from Balin. Yeah, because that's what she wants to learn. Yeah. I don't think that she's somebody who, like, like he's more like a like a Shaolin monk, right? He can, yeah. He can fight if he has to, but he's more, you know, yep, calm and centered and peace and that kind of thing. Um, where she's just like, like, who can I kill? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. She she has definitely been through a lot um, before Balin found her, and then she's using that whatever that pent up rage is of what happened to her. Or that's just who she is. Or maybe that's just who she is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's everything. Like I get, like, like I said, I, I'm interested to see how people feel because there wasn't, there's a lot of stuff that happens in this episode, but it's definitely a, a, a pause in, in, in letting us a chance to exhale, to take in some new information about what's going to happen. What's in the crates. Um, they made a point of saying that they're in the archives and they need right. to put it all on the chimera so they can get ready to go. I wonder if the ring is supposed to go around the chimera and latch on. So scary idea. I did want to talk about the night sisters, the idea of having the night sisters reintroduced into the galaxy after uh, Palpatine um, tells Dooku to it eliminate everybody on Dath- Dathomir. There are f- a very, very few Night Sisters out there in the world. Um, Mirren, um, who is uh, in Je- uh, Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi uh, and Jedi Survivor, um, she's a Night Sister, um, but she is not like weird, crazy kind of Night Sister. She's actually kind of like has a purpose in herself and stuff. And then Morgan Elizabeth is is a descendant of of a night sister, um, but bringing them back into the galaxy and their force magic is a very interesting thing. So I'm wondering if those crates are full of they are uh, stasis state um, stasis stasis tubes, maybe for um, night sisters and night brothers who are a Maul's race. Maul's uh, Maul's mother um, was uh, the Grand Dark Wizard of of Dathomir, and she was the one who gave Maul to Sidious to train to be the dark side. And so, we go all down the mark. But, th- but that idea of those kind of users is, is reintroducing those type of Force users is a piece that Thrawn can use because he can control them. Right. And we're in this universe... We're in and and the universe that we know, the galaxy that we know, um, there's not a ton of force users. Right, around. I was just gonna say that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so I find that very interesting. What those could be. So, yep. Uh, two episodes left. Um, in this last episode, we will be at Disneyland. 
So we're still trying to figure out how that's going to, um, how we're going to do that. So we, it might be, uh, we might record the next morning or something before we leave for San Diego. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, yeah. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So we're going to Disneyland it up. Um, uh, we might watch it in line at, for Rise of the Resistance. <laughs> or something. Yeah. Um, we'll go to Batu and they, they have to show it on a big screen or something. Right. Batu, we'll just right? stand in the Millennium Falcon with to? our phones and our little <laughs> power cord and just there, along with everyone else. I, right. I, I'm pretty sure everybody else who's going to be there is going to be have their phone out and be watching. So, uh, let us know what you thought of this episode and our discussion about it in the in comments down below. Please be nice. That's a requirement around here. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Follow us on all the social media stuff. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. As soon as uh, Lucasfilm and Star Wars releases the plush of the little uh, sort of shell like, people. Yeah, I'm buying one. No, we need the robot one. Uh, yes, we need the robot. That's one. why I'm wearing my sweet baby Kevin, so we can <laughs> all of our robots can talk, our droids can talk to each other. <laughs> Until next time, cult members. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night.